Hello, everybody, and welcome again to Mission Control, a podcast focusing on nonprofit leaders and how they strive to make positive impacts in their community. I'm your host, Paul Schmidt, owner and creative video strategist for Unidus Multimedia, and I am gratefully glad to have Pam McClouchich. You got it. The executive director <laughs> of the Davies Project here with me. Welcome to the show, Pam. Uh, thank you, Paul. It's really nice to be here. <laughs> it's really good to see you in the studio. And so before we start the whole interview process, the first uh, question I always ask is, what is your mission? What is our mission? Our mission at the Davies Project is to provide free rides to medical care for all children in our community who are seriously ill and are challenged with transportation. And that's an interesting nonprofit organization. So it is. Why did you, is this something you founded? Is this your own baby? Yes, this is my own baby, and I really do feel like it's my fifth child. Um, let me see. Uh, my son had cancer when he was three, a very, very long time ago. He's 25 now, healthy and in grad school and doing well. Uh, but we saw a lot of families during his battle that just did not have the ability to get back and forth to their medical care. So that's why we jumped on the bandwagon to when, when the time was right to create this agency. And so how has it gone? It's gone really well. It's been a whirlwind, and uh, COVID has made it even more interesting. Mm-hmm. But uh, we, we are about seven years into, our, into the agency's existence, and um, we've served close to 600 families in the area now, some with multiple rides a week. For an example, imagine one of our moms who has three children. Each of them has serious medical issues. Between those three children, and remember, this is a family without a car. Between those three children, they have 25 specialists that they need to see. Wow. Imagine what, and and this mom is dedicated to her kids and making sure they can get the care they need. This is an extreme case, but my goodness, um, what we, we work with them a lot, and those kids are doing really, really well. And that's what we're trying to do is when a family struggles with transportation, we want to make absolutely sure that they can get their kids back and forth to the medical care they need. And it's not just the it's not just the specialty appointments we take them to. Once a child is in our system, we will take them to physical therapy, occupational therapy, a mental health appointments. We'll take them to primary care so they can get their vaccinations and immunizations. We will take them to dental care, eye care, you name it, because all of those aspects feed into that child's well-being. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Um, but before we get a little bit uh, more into Davies, yep. while I was uh, putting together some questions, there's something that came across. Aha. Uh-huh. Um, and you've actually had like experience um, where you've been in organizations that focused on children mm-hmm. in the last, at least the last decade. Right. Is, are you talking about the Children's Health Initiative? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, so, uh, you know, I mean, is this is uh, that seems like to be a theme of yours with, well. with com, coming into <laughs> 2010? I mean, is that is that. Is there a particular focus for you when it comes to kids? Well, that really came about through my son's health issues. I actually have my master's and PhD in agricultural economics. <laughs> <laughs> I worked in Africa for a long time. Started with the Peace Corps doing fish farming, and that was fantastic work. Thought I would always stay in Africa doing development work. You could never have told me this is where I would end up. But I came to Michigan State to work on my master's and PhD, and I met my husband, who's in the math department at Michigan State. And so we were still sorting out how I could work in Africa and do my agricultural economics work. But then my son became so ill. Uh, He became ill just as I was expecting my third child. And I was six weeks away from delivering her. And to... um, it, it, was, it was a crazy time in our lives, and that really redirected my focus. 
And when my son was about eight years old, he was invited to be a kid of inspiration for the Children's Health Initiative. And that was run by Dr. Deli Davies, who our agency is now named after. And he was the chair of pediatrics and human development in the College of Human Medicine at MSU. And um, he would bring, it was a partnership with women's basketball where children would come in and get to sit with the team and we'd be up in a booth up above. And, and um, I met Dr. Davies that night. And everything just sort of culminated with his mission to really provide better care for children in our community really resonated with me. Before I knew it, I was serving on his board and I had turned away from Ag Econ completely and was then serving as the Associate Director for the Children's Health Initiative. This was not an initiative that um, was in Michigan State's long-term interests, so ultimately it, it was closed down. Dr. Davies is now Senior Vice Chancellor at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Uh, he, he's doing well, but when I started this agency, I wanted a unique name. And I thought, you know, this man had such a vision for our community and is such an upstanding, decent, kind human being, wonderful doctor, that I thought, let me call it the Davies Project and give it a unique name. So that is how I ended up forming this. Uh, when I was at the Children's Health Initiative, my focus was really on clinics and making sure they were getting the resources they needed. But with the Davies Project, the focus became really the family. What could we do directly to address the pressing needs of families to make sure their kids could get medical care? And that's why we ended up focusing on transportation. In our community, 70% of the children that rely on the specialty clinics in Lansing are on Medicaid, and they are missing 60% of their outpatient appointments. So that's what our volunteer drivers are addressing um, in collaboration with us, of course, is making sure the children get all the medical care that they need so that they can be the productive citizens of tomorrow who are going to be running our community. That's awesome. So when you started uh, Davies Project, it was about, what, seven years ago or so, right. seven, eight years ago, um, how has it grown from, I don't know, maybe your first car till now or your first <laughs> transport and did and were you the the transporter oh i was i did everything at the beginning i started this at my dining room table as so many nonprofits start mm. um i was actually calling families i was doing drives i was fundraising you name it all the aspects of it were happening by me at my at my dining room table um, with time, we were able to get a little office space in a church downtown at Grace Lutheran Church. I still appreciate their their assistance at that time. We then moved into the armory for a couple of years because we outgrew that space. Then we outgrew that space again, and we're now in a lovely old firehouse right near Sparrow Hospital. And um, it, it's great to have our own space. I've grown from a team of myself to... I now have a family services coordinator, a volunteer coordinator. I have a uh, vice president of development who is in charge of all of our fundraising, and we have an office manager. So it's, uh, and of course, then we have 80 or so volunteer drivers. Many of them are on pause during the pandemic. That's been challenging. But since the beginning, the number of rides we've provided annually have jumped, jumped, jumped. Um, it's been a little more leveled off during the pandemic, and I expect that to continue for some time, but we are meeting a really critical need in our community. And you, we're, we're at the point now, seven years in, where we can see the children that we helped initially and where they are now. And these are kids who would not have made it to those appointments, mm. who are healthy now, happy, they're able to be in school actively, doing well, and it's, it's, it's really, it's a pure honor to be running this agency, honestly. And when you were at your kitchen table all those years ago, um, is this where you thought you'd see where you'd be? Well, I have to say, when I started this, I thought I would have it up and running in six months, and it took quite a bit longer than that. Uh, it, it's amazing what what ignorance does in terms of being more productive. Um, I it, this is this I, I have to say, I think I've exceeded 
my expectations initially. It, it's really, uh, we've created this model here in Lansing. This is not done like this anywhere else in the country. And there is interest from other states and other parts of the state here on, on adapting this to other communities, which is so exciting. And I hope we c will be able to make those steps. Yeah. So over these seven years, how did you personally grow as an executive director or grow into that role, actually? And then, I mean, tell me a, a little bit about well, what you learned. And <laughs> You know, I really came from more of an academic background and international development background, so this was entirely new to me. If you knew Jack Davis, uh, who was a, such a wonderful philanthropist in this community, I could not have achieved this without him. Uh, he passed away coming on two years ago now, and I, I miss him deeply. But he's the one who really introduced me to the business community and to the parts of Lansing that weren't academically associated with Michigan State. And we've, we've come just such a long way. So, yes, I, I, I feel like um, when he... When he told me you will join Rotary. I, I followed, his, um, followed his lead and I did that. And I can't believe the wonderful people in this community. And it, it's been just a pleasure uh, setting this up and meeting so many neat people. And, and the folks who drive for us are most are senior citizens. And um, a lot of them come to us from teaching social work and medical backgrounds. And they are such compassionate, kind, wonderful people. I meet the best people in town every day, <laughs> including the families we serve. It's, it's oh, we're, we're building bridges across this community, and I love that, too. People who never would have had a chance to meet or an opportunity to meet are, are becoming quite close through these drives because when a driver takes a family to an appointment, they wait with them at the appointment, then they take them home again. So they're together for two to three hours at a time. Great chance for conversation. We ask our drivers to just listen to the families because sometimes all you need is somebody to listen. And these are families, the vast majority, who are really on the socioeconomic ledge already. And then they end up with a very sick child. It, it just it throws so much turmoil into a situation that was already filled with turmoil. So our drivers are in a position to really help break through that isolation families are experiencing and become a part of the conversation and, and just help families know that they belong and that there are people here willing to help. I think that's awesome. And, uh, you know, speaking of your families uh, that you've interacted with over the years, I know that right now you've said that families... Um, use the Davies Project for transportation to sometimes multiple specialists for multiple kids. and But once, I mean, I don't think, do you have an like, age limit? Do you have, do kids age out? Or how do you, how do you manage that? And do you keep in touch with some of the families and see wh how they're doing? And yeah, what's going we, on? let me see. We do work with children ages 0 through 18. If they reach the point where they're aging out, we give it a good year, year and a half to move them on to other services that can help. We, we don't just kick them off our rolls. That's, that's not our style. So um, we'll work with families to make sure they have continuity of care uh, later on. There are two other populations we do serve, though, that, um, that, that really feeds into, again, our community having healthy children. And one is expecting women who lack transportation to go to prenatal care. Mm -hmm. We want those babies born as healthy as possible and the parents to be as ready for uh, parenting as they can be, and that means being healthy too. We also drive parents back and forth to the neonatal ICU unit at Sparrow. If a baby has to stay hospitalized after birth, sometimes that's for a couple of months. And many, many families can't get back and forth for bonding time with their infants. So what that means is we're, allow, we're enabling that bonding time 
and time for the families to be at the hospital so that they can learn the best care techniques when they take the infant home. So when we're saying aging out, we're talking zero to 18, but we do then work with young women who are expecting and young parents who are going to the hospital to spend time with their infants. Mm-hmm. Wow. And you, and you still keep in touch with some? Oh, we do. We do. It's, it's really neat. Um, we, we have families that do come back and that they do want to then get involved with us. I do have a board member who was one of the first parents we served with, with her son a long time ago, and her voice is very appreciated on the board because um, she keeps it real. She keeps us focused, and, and that's excellent. We have one mom and child that they were really, really struggling when the, when the daughter was born, extremely so. And she stopped in a couple of years ago, and she's now working full-time. Her daughter's in school. We filled a very important gap for that family when, when times were incredibly tough. And it's nice to see those stories. We, we have another little girl who went through um, cancer treatments for over three years. It would have been really, really difficult for her family to get her to those appointments. And if you miss any of those appointments, it, it can really turn the tide in not the right direction. So we made sure she attended every appointment, and she's now finished with chemotherapy, thriving in school, doing great. That's excellent. So um, I know that you mentioned Jack Davis being quite an influential uh, force for you as coming into this community and starting a brand new nonprofit. What other resources did you have at your disposal or, or, you know, that maybe, you know, now, but you didn't then and stuff like that. So, because, um, the, the nonprofit community here is really strong. It is. And Mm -hmm. so what did you find, um, as a positive aspect uh, while you were, you know, doing your, your, your day-to-day development? It's been really interesting getting to know the executive directors from lots of other nonprofits in town. This is a very selfless town. And oftentimes we're writing grants for the same pockets of money, but we all work together. Uh, when we hear about a new opportunity, we let each other know. We troubleshoot with each other. That community of executive directors has been huge in helping me learn how to run this agency. Even even right now, as we're, we're dealing with Omicron, uh, we're looking at some, we're going to have to pull back a little bit of our programming just because, because we are, for the first two years, we had no cases of COVID among our families or drivers. This variant is so much more uh, potent that we are finding right now we have a few drivers who are out and we have several families. And so I will be reaching out later today to some of the other executive directors saying, okay, this is what I think we need to do. What are you doing in response to Omicron? And that has become excellent. I mentioned Rotary before, all the business leaders there have been so supportive of our work at the Davies Project. And, oh, when, you, when we meet for lunch once a week, they're always, it, it's a great opportunity to share news about the Davies Project, but also to get feedback from other business leaders uh, about things I should be taking into consideration. I have a fantastic board, too, that um, as our name grows, it's, it's, it's getting easier to fill the slots on the board. And I've really appreciated that, the, the expertise that we have coming in. Our treasurer is from Jackson, and, and he is just superb at what he does. Um, we, we just have an excellent team and, and a very diverse board, too, which, which, really, which really pleases me. Um, there was one other, oh, Leadership Lansing. I participated in that a number of years ago thanks to Matthew Rush of Rush Strategies. He, he annually sponsors a nonprofit executive to, to take part in Leadership Lansing. And this is a way to meet lots of the leadership and the up and coming leadership in the community. And um, that's been extremely valuable. 
One other example is um, Natalie Hool and her um, and her husband, uh, her former husband Jim Matthews. They had a son named Max, who was who who died many years ago at the age of six from meningitis. But they, with their foundation, started Max's race which happens June 25th at the campus of Michigan State. It's a wonderful 5K race, very family-oriented. And um, they, they started giving us the proceeds from that race a few years ago and now have turned the race over to us. I never could have imagined inheriting a race. And, and now we put on this race that we're trying to really grow again, and that's very exciting too. So every day the, the relationships are growing. Uh, the faith communities have been hugely supportive, too, of what we're doing. Uh, so many, like even my, my home church of All Saints, Episcopal and East Lansing, they're, they're significant donors. They're a significant source even of drivers that work with us to, to take children to their care. Wow. Uh, it, <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say about, I mean, that's just awesome and I, actually, I should say I see that. I see that, you know, mm -hmm. being out in the community, being around a lot of the executive directors and a lot of around, uh, around a lot of the nonprofits, you do see that um, com camaraderie, that, yes. that cooperation. Um, and it's like we have resources. Let's share, share the resources. And it's, 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 it is an amazing, uh, amazing thing. And so, um, but yeah, but... Um, so Max's race, I almost forgot about that. Yes. And that's something new and it's something, uh, it's a newer event for you. How is diving into the development <laughs> of that? And how is that, how is that going oh, for you? Oh, the, the trick of all of this is delegation. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, we work with Michelle O'Kelly who she's the race organizer for many of the races in the area. Silver Bells in the City, I think Bayshore Marathon. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember which, which other races, but she very kindly took us on about a year and a half ago. And she puts all the details into place and, and works very closely with all of us. We have a race team. So I kind of hand that off to them. I, I, I am a part of everything that happens with this, but, but I couldn't do this without delegation. Absolutely not. That's great. So um, what do you feel is, over the past seven years or so, is your biggest success? Or has been your biggest success? Oh, the uh, the health of the children we serve. Do you know we've worked with? We have driven to prenatal care over 130 women right now. So every day I'm able to think about these 130 little toddlers out there now that are doing so well in part because of us. And that is huge. When I think of that little girl who battled cancer, she had the same form of cancer that my son had. And I know she's in school and she's healthy. It's great. I go to bed every night knowing we have helped a certain number of families in this community. And, and, and it's not just the rides. Our tagline is more than just a ride. And that's because it truly is. We're not a taxi service. When our drivers take a family to an appointment, they take gallon-sized snack bags um, filled with healthy snacks. And, and that's supplied by another partner, the East Lansing Kiwanis. They keep us supplied with these snack bags. Kids are always hungry after an appointment. And that is, it's such a small gesture, but it is so meaningful to the families. It, it builds connections. People drop off books to us all the time. Children's books, gently used, lots of times brand new. Every time a driver goes out, they take a couple of books. So we're using those rides as true vehicles to bring other kinds of support to the families. It's just all these caring gestures that matter so much. And I can feel that in the families we're serving, 
And that's what I'm thinking about when I go to bed at night is who did we serve today? How many people feel a little bit better tonight because of their interaction with the Davies Project? And uh, just to circle back on the amount of drivers, you said you had 80? We have 80. Now, I want to I wanna say many of them are on pause right now right. because of the pandemic. Uh, they're nervous, and they, they should be. They should be. Um, in any given month, we have probably 30 to 35 drive. Because remember, this is a senior population, a lot of them. So they might go south. They might be snowbirds in the wintertime. So what we do is by having such big ranks in any given month, we can be sure we have enough drivers to, to meet the needs of the families we serve. Last year, for example, we, we, we delivered close to 1,700 rides. That was during the pandemic. Mm. I had expected that to have grown significantly more by now but I'm just happy it's been able to remain as steady as that. And as soon as the pandemic's over, I expect we'll be increasing quite a lot again. So how do you recruit these drivers? A lot of it is word of mouth. A lot of them see our PSAs on television. That uh, it, it, It's an animated PSA that is really very effective. Uh, in fact, we're doing another one right now focused on, um, on the importance of vaccinations, too. Um, it, it, it's a... It does take a full-time, well, part-time volunteer coordinator to bring in the drivers, to constantly be reaching out to civic groups and faith communities. Um, there, there are many different ways to bring drivers in, but a lot of it really is word of mouth. Wow. So um, over the past several years, what do you feel has been your most important learning moment? Wow, that's a, that's a big question. I think for me, it's learning not to grow too fast. I do want to take this to other communities. I've had board members all along saying, don't rush it, don't rush it. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll get there. Um, you want to make sure if we take this to other communities, it's done as well as it is here in Lansing. Hmm. Uh, it, it's got to be really a consistent model that's taken other places. So I think I've been in a rush to get that out there, and I need to pull myself back a little bit, uh, a little bit from that. Um, yeah. Anything that you still struggle with today? Oh gosh. Just not enough hours in the day. <laughs> not enough hours in the day. I really did balance this well. I, I have four children. My oldest is 25. My youngest is a senior in high school this year. As this was growing, they were going through school, and I timed it. I think it was a little accidental, but it's taken up more and more and more of my time as they've needed less and less and less of my time. So next year will be empty nesters, and it's. I, I have a feeling next year is going to be getting even busier. Um, and and I, I'm glad I will have more time to put into it at that stage. Um, I'm sorry. I, I, I miss having my kids around. <laughs> uh, but but I'm, I'm so glad this is my fifth child and I'm, I'm trying to bring it to adulthood too now. So. Wow. Wow. Five, five kids as well as, <laughs> well, and Davies probably is your fifth kid. That That's what, what I'm said? saying. Yeah, yes, yes. Exactly. Well, this so, is my, so this is um, my fifth child. Knowing all the work that went into it and all the time that you spent with it, you know, the good and the bad and the ugly, what are you? What have you done to sometimes, what, what is your, like, how do you escape? How do you <laughs> turn it off just for whatever moment you have and what, what do you do? You know what I do? I, I go for very long walks now. I will go for five, six, seven mile walks and just put on a podcast or talk to my kids or talk to friends and, and, or just walk silently. I do that a lot of the time too. Walks in the woods, walks in the neighborhoods, but that is my escape. Um, wow. that, that, yeah, it, it works for me. It works for me. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. 
Well, once again, I really appreciate you coming on to the program and giving us a little insight into the Davies Project and you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. If if you if anybody wants to get a hold of the Davies Project, where should they connect with you? Yes, please visit our website, thedaviesproject.org. There's lots of information there. We are always looking to recruit new drivers. And um, we really, really want drivers from all across the community coming in to help because this is an excellent opportunity for people from all different backgrounds to meet. And um, I think you'll like the other drivers out there, too, as well as the families you're going to meet. I, I host my drivers once a month for coffee. And it is, they've really enjoyed getting to know one another. But I really want even more people coming in to be a part of this and coming from all different backgrounds. You'll find a home at the Davies Project. And uh, I, I think you'll find it very satisfying. And there you go. That is your invitation to come and join Pam and the rest of the folks at the Davies Project. Thank you, pa Pam. And thank you all again for taking some time to listen to this program. So don't miss the next episode coming out in a couple of weeks. And if there's someone you know of that you would like to hear about with their journey, please email us at missioncontrol at unaduce.com. And if this is your first time here, please subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform and give us a positive review. Thank you very much. See you next time in the Control Center.